Hello and welcome to the Ted Jones World Podcast, episode 188 here, guys. What is up? Happy Monday. Hope, hopefully you're uh, on the way to work, coming back from work. Maybe you're just waking up in the gym. Either way, I praise you for doing that shit, getting after it. Guys, we have the Ted Jones Comedy Show next Monday, November 29th at 7 p.m. And if you guys check the link in this YouTube video, you'll see that we have Ted Jones Comedy Show date set for December. That's December 13th and December 27th. I myself will be going down to Miami December 14th to December 20th. I've talked about this on the podcast previously. If you're a Miami comic, let your boy know. I would love to come through, uh, you know, do a few minutes on your show, whatever it is I do. Hopefully have a couple of shows already set up down there, but always looking to get involved in more. It's getting a little bit more brick in the city. As they would say, brick meaning cold. I don't know if people outside of New York use that word. But like when it gets cold in New York, we refer to it as brick. Yo, it's brick out. But yes, it is brick out. Like 35 degrees now. And at least the weather's evening out. You know, it'll be 35 degrees at least the whole day. Maybe that's better than it being like 52 in the morning and then like 35 at night. I kind of like consistent weather. Which for the most part, like Miami in the winter, it's like... High 50s at night and then like high 70s during the day, which is like, I guess it's good to mix up the weather in terms of like, you don't want to have the 75 degrees every single day. Or do you? I don't know. I don't know. Where do you guys think has the best weather? I mean, I've been told and I've heard around and I've also been there before. San Diego specifically supposedly has the best weather in the country in terms of like per average sunny days and then Washington being one of the states that has the most rain, Seattle specifically. And I don't understand why Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates both like have their businesses there centered around Seattle. That's weird. And then also Starbucks came from there. A lot of action out of Seattle. Tech stuff and like a lot of rain. Does rain make people stay inside and work? I remember my dad has mentioned this before. He's like, it's tough to be in Miami and stay fully grinding, you know, all day, every day when in like New York, when it's freezing outside, you don't want to spend so much time outside. You know, you want to stay inside and maybe get your work done, whatever that is. But like if it's 80 degrees, you know, at like 2 p.m. on a Wednesday and you don't have that much stuff to do, like instead of just grinding in your apartment, whatever, you want to go to the beach, you want to go to the pool, which I understand. So maybe New York... Um, you know, is the place where people get down and dirty, as they say. But, like, Seattle, Washington, why the hype? Why the hype? Starbucks, biggest Starbucks company, like, Irver, Jeff Bezos, uh, uh, Bill, Bill Gates. Gates. Interesting. 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 I wonder, I wonder if they, they would make the move to Texas, Texas for, like, tax purposes, purposes or make the move to Florida, Florida like Elon, Elon Musk is doing, doing, moving out of California. California. But, but I don't know. know. When you go to a place like Florida... Or Texas is just so much less than New York or California. And is New, York, is New York and California, are New York and California, if I should say it like that, better than Florida and Texas? I mean, I guess you could say like the people who live in California and New York will probably, you know, have maybe better things to say about their home state than a Florida and a Texas. But in terms of like taxes and stuff, in terms of how businesses are formed, Um, you know, Florida and Texas are the way to go. So if you guys are working remote, I suggest going to Florida or Texas. I really have not spent too much time in Texas. I did one time go to, or actually two times. I went to El Paso for a national open when I was 14 years old. I ended up being there for like three nights because I like lost first round. And then in San Antonio, I went to the boys 14s national championship and I won a round in that tournament, so I ended up staying there for four days. But the thing was, like, when I went to tournaments in other states, I never really went out and did anything. I remember I went to a national open one time in Chicago, and my coach that I was with, he was probably, well, at the time, he was, like, eight years older than me. So I was 16 years old. He was, like, 22 or 20. No, no, no. He was probably 23 or 24, and he's like, dude, come on. We got to go out. We're in Chicago. And I was like, no, I just want to chill in my hotel room. And this was the time when, like, I had my first girlfriend in high school. And the thing is, when you have your first girlfriend in high school, cell phone usage is limited. So, like, you know, our bills were revolved around when we were allowed to text and, like, how much, how many minutes we'd spend on the phone and stuff like that. So <laughs> I just always wanted to sit around the hotel room and, like, wait for her to call or wait for her to text me, BBM me, whatever it was at that time. But, like, nowadays you can talk to whoever you want, whenever you want. You know, and that also maybe is contributing to catfishing. 
talked about this. I talked about this on the last episode of the podcast. Like when I was using dating apps, I'm really not using dating apps at all. Uh, but like I, I found like a common, a common thread for girls was like girls would have pictures of them not smiling with sunglasses on and with no friends. You know, like even if they looked very pretty on their pictures, I don't know. That seems like a catfish type of way to make a dating profile. No friends in your pictures, sunglasses on, and so- p- pictures of your profile, you know, the side of your face, smiling, head moved into the shoulders. I don't know. But guys, today being Monday, you know, I hope you guys have a wonderful week going forward. Check out the Ted Jones Comedy Show vlog tomorrow. It's called Another Ted Jones Comedy Show. We had an amazing show, but this week coming up, the 12th. 29th one of the better lineups we've ever had and yes again we have december dates set so check that out and then also i'll be in florida for a week in december and i'm excited my dad actually will be down there he's for the most part living in florida for the winter you know as an older gentleman would so i'm sure he's looking forward to that spending a lot of time down there and the thing is like in order for you to be a resident of florida you have to spend six months down there out of the year to like benefit from the tax purposes. And my dad ends up spending probably like four and a half months down there. But six months is just like one month too long. If you think about it, like people could easily go down to Florida uh, at the beginning of November. Right. But then for them to be an actual resident, they got to stay down there six months. So they got to stay down there till May one. And it's tough to be down there all six months. You know, if it was five months, it'd be super easy for people to do that. They go down November 1st, they're able to, Come back up April 1st when it's still freezing in New York. I mean, even May 1st, it's still cold. June 1st, it gets cold. It doesn't really get really nice and warm up in New York, I'd say, until probably end of June. And then even then, it doesn't really start to get, you know, bumping heat, hot summer until like the second week of July, something like that. Maybe first week in July, maybe I'm being dramatic. But I don't know. The weather's changing all over the place. So you just pick a a warm spot and then go there, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. I haven't been on a vacation maybe in a long time. We're talking about weather's weather in other spots. I went to Mexico like five or six years ago with my mom and my sisters. That was fun. I've been to Mexico like four times on like family trips. Not sure. I think it is like the easiest place to go out of the country. I mean, maybe you'd think like Canada or something, but Mexico being attached to the United States, it's still pretty close. This week, a lot of networking was done on the behalf of myself. I was out Every single night past 1030, which is like unlike me. And I think for the most part, guys, we got to start being out there, you know, throughout the night. While it's very nice to wake up early, start your day at 440 in the morning. It's always tough to do that. But, you know, you can't wake up at 440 in the morning if you're going to sleep at like 11 o'clock. You know, I definitely need at least like six and a half, seven hours of sleep to be functional the next day. So the only way I'm really going to be able to be waking up at like 440 in the morning, I think, is like, If I am getting those kind of numbers on, you know, the sleep scale and like my circadian circadian rhythm, I was talking about this with a comic the other night at the stand has been affected. I mean, in the past, like week and a half, just because I was so used to going to sleep at like 930, 1030, whatever that is. And now I'm going to bed at like 1130 or 12. I guess it's not that much of a difference. It just takes a little bit of getting used to, which I totally will. Had a tough week in the gym today. Not tough, rather hard working week in the gym i'd say what's your guys favorite workout are you guys doing like soul cycle berries boot camp running whatever i haven't ran in like a couple weeks um just because i'm taking a second off of running my chest is super freaking sore right now did pec flies you know i'm just telling you guys all the things <laughs> you want to hear just giving you the workout 911. tiger king let's talk about this the second season of tiger king a little bit slow for me, it seems like they're bouncing around from each episode. Like the first episode was about Joe Exotic in jail. And then the second one was about Carol Baskin. Now the third one's about Jeff Lowe. So we'll see what happens in this fourth episode. Hopefully they bring everything together and we can just kind of see how the Tiger King empire has formed, you know, through those four people or three people, whatever it is. And like, obviously... The picture that has been painted of all of these tiger people is that they're all crazy. And I think in general, like, yeah, if you own exotic animals like that who could potentially kill you in a second, gnaw your face off, it's a little crazy, in my opinion. 
I wonder if there are like shark people that are kind of like these tigers. Well, maybe people who like own aquariums, but you don't really have. I guess you do have sharks in aquariums, aquariums, but like you don't really swim with the sharks. I guess you could do that too, assuming they're trained. But I mean, is it worse to keep an animal in captivity for economic purposes? You know, like are aquariums worse than killing animals for food? That's actually a good question. You know, does PETA get more upset when you're when you have a factory farm over an aquarium? You know, like I remember Blackfish on Netflix. This came out like a number of years ago. This orca whale that was stuck in captivity for like 30 years just in the same tank and the same like four cement walls. They were saying how that was just full animal abuse because like it, it's a person and you'd see these orca whales like cry over their baby whales. You know, if they were separated from them. So all these animals, you know, do have thoughts, feelings, faces, mothers. So that's something that we got to realize, guys. You know, I brought a new bit to the stage talking about how I'm vegan. And uh, we'll see. That should start hitting more over the next 10 years. But <laughs> we'll see. I guess I'll just keep doing it until it fully hits. Guys, also, December 2nd, 7 p.m., I will be opening for Hannah Burner at the Stress Factory in Bridgeport, Connecticut. I hopefully have a lot of friends from UConn who are still in Samford, maybe in Bridgeport, close by Milford, wherever it is. Make that trip December 2nd, 7 p.m. You guys can check the link um, on hannahburner.com. That is December 2nd, 7 p.m. Also, you can go to the Stress Factory website in Bridgeport directly, and um, you'll see tickets there. But that should be a great time. So I'll be opening for Hannah doing like 10, 15 minutes. That'll be excellent. I can't wait for that. And 7 p.m. show in Connecticut. What a great time on a Thursday night. It's really going to be amazing. 7 p.m. Thursday. And then also the Friday after that, the day after that, J.B. Smoove, I saw is headlining that Friday and Saturday. And for those of you who don't know, uh, J.B., he was in um, Curb Your Enthusiasm. He was Leon in Curb Your Enthusiasm. I think he's actually still in the show. Him and Larry, like, get along great. But um, great, great, um, you know, great venue that they have there, the Stress Factory in Bridgeport. And I'm super pumped to get there. And if there are any Yukon people listening or Connecticut people in general, guys, make sure you get to that show. Would love to see your face out there. It'd be really great. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns about that, just DM me on Instagram, Ted Jones World, or Ted Jones World at gmail.com. Like, uh, dot com again i would love to see you out there and i'm sure hannah would love to see you out there as well i stopped by the improv asylum in chelsea last night saw sebastian Kennelly's show new york is phenomenal that's the name of the show sebastian was on episode 142 of the ted jones world podcast sat right here on the couch and we had a great little discussion about drugs and life and his time in staten island and all of his you know all of his experiences in improv just in general the guy killed it last night throws a great show so good job bro uh but just in general was bouncing around a lot this week guys so i'm a little bit tired slept till like 10 30 today you know that was after probably hitting the hay around like 12 30 or one had some chickpeas this morning oh yeah and i didn't even tell you guys i fasted for 37 hours that's two nights that i slept so i had eaten on thursday night at about 10 p.m went to sleep didn't eat all day friday and then just ate at like 11 30 a.m and i broke the fast with some chickpeas obviously the 24 cans of chickpeas that julio got me for my birthday have come in handy and then also had some fruit and had a bagel as well but I felt so weak. It was crazy. Like, I've fasted before. Obviously, you guys know this. I've talked about this here. And on the, f the first vlog, actually, was called The Fast. So I have been fasting, like, once every two months. But this particular time, I was so tired. I think maybe it was because yesterday I just had such a big workout and did it. didn't end up eating after it. Because when you fast, you really shouldn't be working out. But I went, like, well, I w went to sleep at... Like 11 o'clock after eating at 10 o'clock on Thursday night. Went to the gym about 12 hours later at 11.30 and then just decided like I wasn't going to eat that day. But I'd recommend you guys not working out if you're going to fast on that particular day. Because maybe that's why I felt so exhausted. I just felt so, I felt so weak this morning. Like even after sleeping for nine hours, I still felt tired, which isn't normal. So got back in the, this morning with some carbs and now I'm feeling great. You know, we'll see what, what I'm going to eat that tonight, you know, going to a little party in Hudson Yards. That should be fun. Hudson Yards, I've talked about being hopefully the new epicenter of, I don't know, where young people are going to go because I feel like 
there's not really one specific place anymore where young people go. Like, it used to be meatpacking district, people in clubs and all this shit. But, like, clubs aren't really popping that much anymore. There used to be so many clubs. Like, back, <laughs> back in the day when I was promoting clubs at 21, 22 years old, like, eight years ago, it was just, like, a different club every two blocks in the meatpacking district. And maybe that was back in the day when people were, like, balling a little bit more, throwing money, like, $2,500 on the table. But you don't hear that as much anymore. Like, I remember I, we'd get together 10 girls and three guys and go get a table, something like that, but as promoters. And then other people that were buying tables were spending, like, $2,500. I'm not seeing that as much anymore. Yes, there's still the Marquis. There's still the One Oaks. But I don't know. There were, like, a lot more clubs back in the day that just closed down. You know, like a Kiss and Fly, the old 10 June, Cielo, Griffin. You can name a bunch of them. Gilded Lily. But clubs in general, I think, only really stay hot for like three to four years. You know, it's tough to justify people continuously spending thousands of dollars at a small table in the corner of a club for three hours a night. You know, if you really think about it. But like, that's how clubs make money. You know, and like letting people into the club. They're like $200 bar tab. That's it. You know, you're not, you're not uh, getting in unless you pay a $200 bar tab, which $200 gets you like six drinks because that $200 bar tab probably includes the, you know, $25 drinks and then you tip on top of that. But like bottles in the club, even Grey Goose. I bet where you live, Grey Goose bottles, bottles are probably $250, right, at least. And like at some of these clubs in New York, like I saw Grey Goose bottles for $750. I would never obviously spend this because I was working. I was promoting. We were getting <laughs> these bottles for free. But like a bottle of Dom Perignon, forget about it. It's like $2,000. A bottle of Veuve is $1,500. And then, yes, Grey Goose, $750. And this is after you're, you know, you're paying $2,000 just to sit at a table in the corner of the club, act cool with your bros and your blazer. I don't know. The fad seems to be seems to be somewhat lost here in New York. Obviously, places like Las Vegas, L.A., Miami, they still have these big table bills, stuff like that. You know, you'll go to live in Miami, spend fifty thousand dollars, go to the Win in Las Vegas, spend a hundred thousand. L.A. I don't know. Maybe you'll go to one of those clubs, Delilah, some shit like that, and spend a lot of money. But it's not. If, from what I've seen, I don't think it's really happening that much in New York, or I haven't heard so much about people spending an outrageous amount of money at New York clubs and since this guy, Joe Lowe. You guys ever heard of this? I'm actually going to look up his Wikipedia description, but this guy had embezzled billions of dollars from the Malaysian government. So I'm going to read this. Joe Lowe is a Malaysian businessman and international fugitive sought by authorities in connection with the 1MDB scandal. He is accused of being the mastermind of the massive fraud, which prosecutors allege was a scheme to siphon $4.5 billion from 1MDB into Lowe's personal accounts. He's a beneficiary of numerous discretionary trust assets by the U.S. government to originate from payments out of the Malaysian 1MDB fund. So the 1MDB fund was um, a development fund that was supposed to build a number of buildings in Malaysia. And he was very close with the prime minister of Malaysia just from like going to school with the prime minister of Malaysia's children. So he got in with the government, was siphoning all this insane money, became a partial producer on Wolf of Wall Street, giving them, giving Scorsese like millions of dollars to put the movie together. He became boys with all these celebs. Apparently one night spent like a million dollars at the Club Avenue, which isn't there. It was like around the corner from One Oak, but like spending a million dollars buying champagne for everybody in the club, Paris Hilton's birthday, gave Leonardo DiCaprio like a $9 million piece of art. And now he is missing, basically, in China. So I haven't seen a big baller, I guess, like that since a Joe Low. But, like, if you, kinda, if you ask me, like, I don't know, it's, it seems a little bit corny to be spending that much money in a nightclub. Like, maybe I can understand when Drake goes to, like, a, a strip club in Houston, you know, he'll throw out a million dollars in cash. But, like, you know, that goes to the, the ladies who are working there, you know? But when you're spending $100,000 in a nightclub, well, it's just going into the owner's pocket, whatever. And you're just buying bottles of alcohol that, like, nobody's going to even fully drink anyway. I don't know. I understand the hype of going to a club, but, like, not spending that much money at a club. Like, if you have a lot of money and you're spending 10 k at a club, okay, that's a lot of money. You know, if you think about it like that. But, like, it's funny. When you get, like, a 12-pack of Fiji water, like, those waters end up being, like, $10 a pop. 
So like 120 for waters. This is the, these are like bills that you see, like 120 for waters, $250 for Red Bulls. Just crazy prices like this. And they price gouge the shit out of you there, obviously, because you're there. You can, where else are you going to, you know, where else are you going to go? You bring in a bottle from outside the club. I actually remember like kids trying to do that. They're like bring in their own alcohol. Easily would get kicked out. Can you imagine? Like even bringing a bottle of like booze to a restaurant. <laughs> imagine how much money you'd save. Like you go to Cheap Riani and they're charging you $23 for a vodka soda. It's like, bro. Put a gray goose in your pocket, save yourself 20 bucks probably. Yeah, because even even the seltzers there are $3, something like that. Oh, and in my fasting for 37 hours, just if you guys had any questions about this, I only consume water and iced coffee. Uh, I've, I have fasted in the past and used seltzer, but apparently it's not, not good to drink seltzer during your fast. It's not as beneficial for you as if you would just drink coffee and water so 37 hours went by i'm feeling good and then you know in terms of like seeing actually on my body like the results of that i think it usually takes about 72 hours after you fast you know and you refuel the body but i it, i did go through a time about like two years ago where i was fasting way more and the thing is it'll like really sneak up on you you know if you're fasting like once a week you do that for a month, like you'll really see some changes in your body. While it is extremely difficult to fast like once a week for a month, that will do wonders for losing weight if that's what you're trying to do. Uh, regenerating your cells, clearing out that bod. And you're not going to die, guys. You know how many people in the entire world go a day without eating food, 36 hours, a week without eating food? You'll be fine. Drink water, drink coffee. You'll be good. Try it for one day. It's going to hurt. But then by hour like 18 of not eating, start to feel euphoric and whatever. And then just getting to sleep is one of the harder things. You fall asleep and then you're good. 24 hours of fasting. How often would I recommend that? I don't know. Once every two months, once every three months. You do Think about it. You do four times a year. You miss four days of food out of the 365 days in the year. It's not that bad. Think about the people in the world who are starving. They definitely don't get to eat every single 24 hours. Guys, so without further ado... We will get to a listener DM today. Guys, send in your emails to jonesworld at gmail.com. Hey, I'm a comedian from the Bay visiting until the 31st, and I know this is hella last minute, but if anyone drops or you have space or time for me to do your show, let me know. That's funny. My roommate from college always says hella. So that's why I'm not responding, because I'm pissed. You shouldn't uh, talk about... Stuff like that. My name is Blah. I'm an LA-based stand-up comic. I'm going to be in New York, and I'd love to do your show. Um, it's not like I ignore all these people, whatever. It's just like, you know, you got to check out uh, their backgrounds and such. NFTs, NFTs. What is all of this crap? It's crazy how many... Um, how many spam messages I get. Guys, if you have anything you want to see or hear about on the vlog or the podcast, you let me know. TedJonesWorld at gmail.com. Ted Jones World on Instagram. You guys know where to find me. Check the link in this YouTube description. Hopefully see you next Monday at the Ted Jones Comedy Show, November 29th. If I don't see you then, we'll see you December 13th or December 27th. Or if you're in Florida, the 14th through 20th of December, you let me know and we'll freaking chill. Thanks for tuning in to the Ted Jones World Podcast and we'll see you next time. Peace.